one, Dave. Because, and you know who you are, Dave, because you can never have too much cowbell. More cowbell, Dave. All right, anyway, happy Cinco de Mayo. Feliz Cinco de Mayo for you Spanish-speaking friends. Today is the 5th of May, and it is notorious for partying. People use it just like we use St. Patrick's Day as an excuse to drink. So if you're one of those people that's planning on going out drinking tonight, I am going to make you guys an alternative for the people that don't drink or that just want to stay healthy. I'm going to show you guys how to make an avocado margarita sorbet, which I know sounds interesting. We're going to kind of make it up as we go. So you guys are going to have fun with me today. We're just going to be playing in the kitchen and making it like, hey, let's add a little more of this, a little more of that. So you might want to get your notes, uh, your paper out to make some notes. Um, but before I get started with the recipe, I want to talk to you guys about a couple things. One is how to stay healthy while eating out. So maybe tonight you're going to go out for Mexican food. You might be eating some greasy chips that aren't really that healthy because we know corn chips are fried in corn oil and vegetable oil. And usually most of the corn chips that you're going to get in a Mexican restaurant or corn tortillas are going to be GMO. Unless it's an organic restaurant and specifically says non-GMO, you're probably going to get exposed to some uh, GMOs. And I know a lot of friends, a lot of people that do eat corn chips and corn tortillas because at least they don't have gluten, which is a step in the right direction. But I did do a blog recently on how there's a lot of mold in corn. I mean, a lot. They're, they're fine that when they, they test the corn, there's, there's huge amounts of mold. That and then cashews. So just be aware. And I really feel like I listen to a lot of podcasts. I read a lot of stuff on the internet. And the more educated we are, it's not about being paranoid and being what's called orthorexic, where you're just so paranoid about everything you never eat anything. It's not about that. Like, we're living in the real world. We want to have real lives. We want to have fun. We want to play. We want to go out to eat. So if you are going to go out to eat, whether it's tonight, maybe you're going to have a margarita while you're out, or you're going to have some fried food, like whatever you're going to have, you know, the first thing to do is just enjoy it. When you're indulging, you want to enjoy it, right? But I have a couple tricks on things you can do to make it a little better when you go to a restaurant, and also how to, at the end, if you are drinking, how to avoid that hangover the next day if you think, oh my gosh, I drank too much, I know I'm not going to feel good. So the first thing is when you're eating out, what can you do? A couple of things I've done, and I've done it a lot, is I smuggle stuff in. Now, as women, we have purses, so it's a little easier for us. But men, I see carrying bags a lot more these days, usually backpacks. And you can put things like your own olive oil in there. You can even throw a whole lemon or lime in there. Usually restaurants are going to give you lemons, so that's not a big deal. But the reason I say to put your own olive oil in there is because sometimes, or most of the time that, that this has been tested, I believe it's 90% of the time, I could be wrong on that number, but a huge amount of the time that the olive oil has been tested in restaurants that they've called olive oil is not even olive oil and or it's olive oil. They can technically say it's olive oil, but it's been cut with other GMO oils like canola oil, uh, vegetable oils, the cheaper oils because let's face it, restaurants are in it for the profit. So anytime they can cut corners and still be telling you, hey, it's olive oil, you know, you just might want to be aware of that. And the way like my body will tell me is my skin breaks out or my liver just feels really sluggish. And maybe I don't notice anything, but after eating out, if you're, if you're someone who travels a lot and eats out a lot, it will start to uh, add up on you. And so some tricks are just bringing your own olive oil and lemon juice, and then you can order a beautiful salad. See what they've got on the menu. So if you see they've got avocado on one dish over here, or they've got guacamole, you know, you can get at a Mexican restaurant, let's say, you can get the salsa, you can get the guacamole, and just make that your salad dressing. And then order the salad and make sure that you always say no cheese, even if it doesn't, if you're uh, plant-based, if you're not eating cheese, which going into that topic is a whole nother topic, which most of you guys know, but 2% blood and pus is allowed in all dairy products. So that means for every 100 bites, you're getting two bites of blood and pus. And... Uh, you know, just all the um, hormones and everything that you're getting when you're going to a regular restaurant, believe me, you're getting the hormone-laden cheese and the hormone-laden dairy. So even though you think maybe it's safe, you're still contributing to a really bad practice in this country of the way animals are treated. So um, just being aware of that by always saying dairy-free, I'm allergic to dairy. And you can use the allergy word versus just the I don't want it because they will be a lot more conscientious when you tell them you're allergic to stuff. Um, the other thing you can do, like what I used to do when I was first doing 100% raw, is I would actually make my own salad dressing and bring that in in a bottle, and then I'd bring in my own avocado, a ripe avocado in my purse, and I'd bring in some of those freeze-dried peas. Have you guys seen these freeze-dried peas that are, they're called Just Peas from a company called JustTomatoes.com, 
And all the RSPs that are free dry, freeze dried, so they're like a crouton. So if you're missing out on like the crunchy stuff like that, um, you can add those on as your croutons. Uh, the other thing you can do is, and I've done it before, but I don't eat corn anymore, so I'm not doing it. But I would bring in the the um, organic baked corn chips from Trader Joe's, the blue organic baked corn chips. I know that's a lot, but you can put it in a Ziploc bag, and then you kind of just you know dip into the salsa with your own corn chips. And you're just going to notice that when you're not eating all those fried oils, I don't think there's anything wrong with healthy coconut oil or healthy olive oil, but when you're frying it, it's just really denaturing and it's really hard on your liver. So you could have an alcohol hangover, but you, like I'm the kind of person that gets a food hangover if I eat cooked oils or just too many weird heavy fats. So those are just some tricks you can do. You can also use the beans. Like if you go to a place like that, get the whole beans versus pinto or versus refried. Because refried they usually use lard or some kind of even, I hate to say this, but Crisco to make it kind of rich and delicious. Why are refried beans at Mexican restaurants so much better than the ones we make at home or than you get in a can? Because they're usually putting in lard or extra fats that you don't know what they are and they probably don't even know themselves unless it's the cook. Um, so using whole beans, the pinto beans with the juice, and you can use that as part of your salad dressing, mix that into your salad. So make your own kind of taco salad. So I just do that too. When I go to any restaurant, I just mix and match and be like, hey, I'll get the steamed broccoli. You know, I see you've got avocado. Can I just get a side of avocado? Blah, blah, blah. You know, a lot of places now are offering gluten-free stuff too, so you can check into that. But just being more aware of what you're ordering and not feeling like you're at the mercy of, like, oh, I had to go out. I had to eat this bad food. That's actually not true. You can even at a breakfast place that you go, like if all there are is omelets, say, hey, I, can you just bring me all the veggies that are on the veggie omelet? Just, you know, steam them or whatever. Um, so there's little tricks and things you can do. The other thing is um, just what do you do when you've gone out and you think, oh my gosh, tomorrow I'm going to have a hangover or like you don't feel well, like your liver. So what is a hangover? All a hangover is, is it's tied to what your liver is trying to process. So, um, you know, helping out the liver any way you can. So these are a few tricks and I actually, I think I mentioned this on another Facebook Live, but a few years back, I haven't really didn't, done any major alcohol indulging in a long time, but I went over to a girlfriend's house and um, we were drinking and they were making these super yummy drinks and I kept drinking and uh, I came home at like 2 in the morning and I was like, I do not feel well. So I did all these tricks because I knew in my mind, because I do so many liver flushes, what can I do to help my liver? So I did them and lo and behold, the next morning I felt amazing. I woke up feeling great. So the first one is just to have a positive attitude, right? If you're going to drink or you're going to eat out or you're going to do what you're going to do, don't think, oh my God, this is so bad for me. I'm going to feel horrible tomorrow. Think. I'm going to have this indulgence and hey body, this is just fun, this is just having a good time. I know you're just going to pass it right through. Take some digestive enzymes. So, you know, we have these amazing ones called um, uh, Enzyme Supreme. Wait, what are they called? Power Plus Enzymes. Um, I take them all the time. I just couldn't remember the name of them. But anyway, those will help really di help your liver to digest any extra food. So take that before you eat. And then when you get home that night, or you could do it the next morning, but ideally if you do it before you go to bed, the first thing you can do is Epsom salt. So Epsom salt has, is high in magnesium and it's known to help kind of detoxify you. So you can either submerge in a hot magnesium bath and use at least a pound of it. And you know, if you're getting ready to go out pretty soon, just buy it when you're going to your destination and it's going to be in your car and you'll just have it, like go to a Walgreens or whatever. Um, and then you, the other thing, if you don't have a bathtub, is just do a salt foot bath. And it could be sea salt or Epsom salt. And you want to do as much as you can in there, really hot water. And so it'll even suck the toxins out through your feet. And it also should bring up your core temperature. So a really hot bath is going to make you sweat. And guess what? Sweating. That's why people, so many people go to Bikram Yoga the day after drinking. They're trying to sweat out all those toxins. I've seen it in there. You can actually smell the alcohol coming off people. Um, so sweating. So if you have a sauna or you have a gym that's open 24 hours, you could go and sweat or even tomorrow morning, you could go and sweat out some of those toxins that you've created. Um, that's another one for at least 20 minutes at as high a heat as you can stand. Sweat, sweat, sweat. And you can do other ways to sweat too, just going outside and hiking or running or doing things that are going to majorly make you sweat. The other thing is a castor oil pack. Have you guys heard? Most of you have heard of castor oil. I know this is backwards, but this is the brand that we carry. This is PRL. It's a really good brand. Castor oil, a lot of people know of it as like when you get not or when you eat something, you use it to make yourself throw up. But you don't want to drink this. You just want to put it on your liver. Your liver is on your right side, right inside your rib cage. So just if you can feel your rib cage, you're feeling your liver. It's up inside there. 
Um, you can just use a cotton flannel like this, put about five tablespoons of castor oil on it, slap it on your liver, and maybe put a heating pad and just go to sleep with it wrapped around. You can either use saran wrap, which will make you sweat a little bit, or an ace bandage, but sweat out the toxins with the castor oil and help really soothe your liver. Uh, so that's another really great trick. And you can do that like if you're just feeling like, I don't have time for a castor or for Epsom salts or any of this other stuff. Just slap a castor oil pack on, go to bed, put a heating pad in your bed, and you'll sweat it out overnight and it'll suck up a lot of the toxins. It'll help dissolve them. Um, the other thing you can do is apple cider vinegar. You could do like one to two tablespoons, either after, right after you drank when you come home or the next morning. Um, you could even throw a little garlic in there. It's kind of nauseating sometimes for some people, but just slugging down some apple cider vinegar, one to two tablespoons, maybe in a little bit of warm water, is going to really help all that malic acid is gonna help soothe and ease the liver. So again, this could be for overeating, eating fried food, like if you had corn chips because you get go out for Cinco de Mayo, or you drink one too many margaritas. These are all really great tricks just to help you because again, we're humans, we live on this planet, we wanna have fun sometimes, we wanna indulge. It's what we do, I would say, some people say 80% of the time. I think it's what we do 85 to 90% of the time. You don't want it, like 80% is kind of pushing it. But most of the time, if we're eating healthy and we're doing well, we can, our bodies can afford for us to splurge a little bit. And we're actually designed that way, like if we came across a toxic plant when we were hunter-gatherers, or if we, something happened where we got exposed to something, the liver and the body is designed to help clean it out. But if you start doing it too much, the liver just can't keep up. So I will be going in on another talk, Facebook Live, about liver cleansing. And what, this is a great time of year to start thinking about liver cleansing. I have a whole liver cleanse protocol on um, it's online.purejoyplanet.com. So just online.purejoyplanet.com. Lots of uh, courses on there. But um, the other thing I want to mention to you is I'm talking about courses before I start with our margarita sorbet. Doesn't that sound fun? Um, is uh, we have our summer love camp retreat coming up in Bend, Oregon in September. And that one's going to be filling up fast. A lot of people have been curious. We've got people putting down their deposits. So we can only hold about 20 people. We already found the location. It's beautiful, gorgeous, uh, lots of forests. I've been hearing a lot lately about how forests are so healing for the body and nourishing and forest bathing. So we're gonna be getting outside a lot in nature. We're gonna be having a lot of food demos and eating amazing food and just so much fun, a really connection weekend. So that's gonna be um, September 7th in Bend, Oregon for three and a half days. And then you can also just do our summer love camp with us online, or you can do both. Okay, warm up with the love camp. And what the love camp is, is going completely grain free. I think we use maybe a little bit of quinoa, but we might be taking all grains out for our summer one, just to kind of get you adapted to less grains or no grains. But we have so many amazing recipes, you won't even miss the grains. Um, I've been working a lot with coconut milk and creating some new recipes with some dressings and curries and really fun stuff. So if you want to join our summer love camp, it's still on sale right now. Early bird price of $249. It's going to go up to $299 to $300 and by uh, June 1st. Uh, so you probably want to get in on that one too. So anyway, any of these courses I'm talking about, just go to online.purejoyplanet.com. So I'm going to move into our margarita tassely recipe. So I just kind of came up with some ingredients and we can play together, even though Let's see, um, I'm here seeing some comments here, but if you guys want to comment, I'll try and read them um, about like what you think I should put in. I know that I'm just kind of talking to you and I can't hear you, but we can do this together. I can pretend I'm giving you a sample. Here's nothing, nothing yet, Caitlin says. Okay, yeah. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to start with our base. You can choose either coconut meat, which I shared with you guys last week. I like this Exotic Superfoods uh, coconut company with the frozen coconut meat, exoticsuperfoods.com. Um, so coconut meat is one choice, or avocado. I just happen to have a really beautiful ripe avocado, so I'm going to use that. This this will serve, I, I'm going to make enough to serve two margaritas, so you and a friend. Okay, and even though it's not a real margarita, you could put, I guess you could put alcohol in there if you wanted to, some tequila. But it's going to start with about a half of an avocado. This is about, I would say, a half of a cup of avocado meat, it looks like, give or take. Okay, make sure it's nice and ripe and green. The reason I'm doing this today is because it's Cinco de Mayo, and avocado is definitely very Mexican. And maybe a lot of people can't get coconuts in parts of Mexico, but they can all get avocados. The next thing is, and this is, yes, this is going to be sweet, so it sounds weird, but we are going to add some cilantro in. And this looks like it's about 
Uh, if you ball it up, it's probably about a packed tablespoon of cilantro, maybe a little bit more than that. I'll save some for the top. I feel like I've got something on my face that's itching me. Um, okay, the next thing is some orange zest. Now, in triple sec, which is what they put in margaritas, that's got a little bit of an orangey taste. So I'm going to use, because I'm doing very low glycemic right now, for those of you guys who uh, did, missed last week, I was talking about how I'm on a candida healing program right now, um, just to kind of keep everything at bay and uh, just get rid of any sweet stuff in my diet for a while. I like to do that from time to time. So the orange peel or the orange zest doesn't have any sugar in it. It's just the juice. So I would say about a teaspoon of orange zest. Um, so that's really awesome. The smell coming out of there, can you guys smell it? <laughs> it's amazing. So you get aromatherapy while you're cooking, which kind of explains why I'm always in a good mood. It's like when you're around food and you're smelling it, it makes you feel good, as long as you're not eating all of it. Um, the next thing I'm gonna put in is some aloe vera. I showed you guys this in another video. I actually have aloe plants, five of them outside my house. I peel them, I take the green off, and then I put the little chunks into a jar with purified water. And then this will last for a couple weeks. So then when I want it, I can just pour a little bit of this. Um, it's kind of like slimy or a little bit thick, but also there's a big chunk of the aloe gel. So I'm just gonna put like one tablespoon of aloe gel. Now that's optional because you may or may not have aloe vera, but aloe vera is really healing for the gut. So this could be a good precursor, or if you are putting alcohol in it, it's gonna help with help just keeping the gut nice and balanced. Um, it works as a gentle laxative, but not really. It's just more like just super soothing and it coats the gut with those gelatinous factors. And there's a lot of uh, studies that have shown that it's help, it helps with curing cancer and all kinds of cool stuff. So you always wanna get a little aloe in there if you can. So just like that was like one chunk, maybe like a teaspoon and a half to a tablespoon. Um, I'm gonna use malic acid in here and some of you guys have heard me talk about malic acid before. This is the stuff that we sell for our liver flesh because Malic acid is made from concentrated apples without the sugar. So it's all the sour without the sweet. So that's why when you do a liver flush, sometimes people drink a quart of apple juice on the day or every day for five days when they're getting ready for their flush. Now that adds up to a lot of sugar because once you remove the fiber from the fruit, it's pure sugar, right? There's no fiber. Even the best intentions of the world of drinking orange juice and apple juice is going to be pure sugar, pure fruit fructose in your body, which is really hard on your pancreas because it spikes your insulin levels, which is tied to death and aging, premature death and aging. So I just really like to always keep my sugars as low as possible. So malic acid is a great way to cleanse and purify your liver, which again, kind of tying back to this whole hangover helper, this could be a great hangover helper as well. Um, a little bit of malic acid goes a long way because it's so sour, it's like pucker sour. And it can kind of, if you don't have this, just use extra lime juice. But I'm gonna use about a quarter teaspoon of it in here. And that's gonna give it that nice tart, like margaritas tend to have a nice tart sourness to them. So that's going in. And then um, I've got some limes here. Now did you guys know that limes are actually not ripe unless they're yellow? Which is almost impossible to find in the store. But if you know someone with a lime tree, so I'm just adding just a little bit of lime zest. If you know someone with a lime tree, get them to let them get ripe and then pick them off the tree yourself. And you'll notice that that fruit is so much more healing and alkalizing than an unripe lime. But we're using it for the flavor. You could also use lemon in this. So I'm just gonna squeeze about one lime into this. And so that's, if you're, if you're measuring, if you only have like, if you maybe bought the store-bought lime juice um, that's already pre-juiced, it's about two tablespoons of lime juice, give or take. Okay, now this is all, we're kind of just making it up. I'm just coming up with it out of my brain, like this is what I like. Um, I want to add some salt, because margaritas tend to be a little salty. So this is, uh, this is not Himalayan salt. Today it's uh, real salt. Can you guys see the color in that? So we always want there to be minerals in your salt. It should look kind of flecky and colored. Can you guys see the colors in there? That means that it's high in minerals, and it's going to act completely different than white salt does in your body. White salt causes hard, high blood pressure. White salt is not ideal at all for, we shouldn't be consuming white salt. So you always want your salt to have minerals. So a quarter teaspoon of salt, and then we need to sweeten it with something. Some people might use honey, some people might use maple syrup, although that would be weird in a margarita. I'm gonna use my sweet stevia. About, um, I'm gonna start with an eighth of a teaspoon. I might need more, but I don't want it to be really sweet. I just want it to be, and in fact, I've actually cut out stevia. Oops, 
That was a little bit more than a teaspoon. So um, I've cut it out, so I'm not really using stevia right now, but I'm doing it just for the sake of this recipe to show you. Um, so there's already kind of a lot of ingredients in here. So at this point, you could just add the water and the ice and blend. But since I have it, I'm going to do the pineapple because it's kind of like, pineapple's not really margarita, but it just kind of has that Mexican-y flair to it. So only about three drops of the pineapple flavor of the medicine flower. And then, um, oh, if you want, if you just want it to be even creamier, you can add the premier lecithin granules in. Now, lecithin's kind of been given a bad rap. People are like, oh, ew, soy lecithin, that's disgusting. Well, I mean, I've been researching this for years and I've actually been using it for years. And this is a non-GMO. There's only two non-GMO soy lecithins that I know of. One is by Premier Research Labs and the other is by Health Force Nutritionals. And um, soy lecithin helps coat the myelin sheets, not just in the brain, but in the entire body, helping to ease and soothe your nervous system. Did you also know, Caitlin just told me today, that um, it actually helps, because it helps water and fat emulsify together, it helps with people that have, maybe you've had your gallbladder removed and you just can't digest fat. So when you put it in with fat, it actually helps to digest the fat better and helps your bodily body to utilize it versus just making you tired and sluggish. So I'm just gonna put about a teaspoon in. One of the uh, extra benefits, a culinary benefit, is that it makes things creamy and just super great mouthfeel. So I know that was a lot of ingredients. So your basic thing you wanna remember is just the fat, maybe the lime juice, um, the something to sweeten it, water and ice, the aloe, the orange zest, all the other stuff, the pineapple, those are all just kind of extras. Remember to put the salt in though. So, okay, so now I've got my base and I'm gonna add a little bit of water in. This is two cups here, but so I'll use like, I'm just gonna do enough just to come to the top of the avocado. So I know I'm gonna get like a pudding out of this at this point. Okay, so I'm gonna blend this. You guys can see that, or at least part of it. I'm gonna blend it up until it turns into a pudding, and then I'm gonna add the ice, and then we're gonna taste it. Sound good? Yeah. Gentlemen, women, start your blenders. <laughs> at this point it definitely needs some ice but you can see it's like a nice creamy I can smell oh that cilantro and orange together smells amazing so now I've got some ice in here uh, looks like I've got about a, a cup of ice hopefully that's enough do you guys remember some of you guys have come to every Facebook live do you remember when I showed you talked to you about blessing your water and how they do the the crystals on the water well, we've been playing around here a little bit with blessing the water and when we remember to do it. So today I filled the ice cube tray and I filled it with our good spring water, like the best water we have. And then right at the last minute I was thinking, I'm just going to bless it and see if we get the crystals because I'll show you the difference. Most of our ice does not have crystals. Um, let's see. So this is a normal one that we've done. This is a normal ice cube tray. You can see there's no crystals on it. And then, oh shoot. I think it got smashed, Caitlin. That's all right. Okay, so it got a little bit smashed, but can you guys see? It, there was tons of crystals sticking up here, but we accidentally put another tray on top. But can you see how those crystals started to form up there? That doesn't usually happen. And even just the structure on top of the ice cubes is a little bit different this time when I did the blessing on it. It has like these structured lines. I know it's hard to see on the camera, but can, there's a little bit more crystals there. But the side where my hands were, because I stuck it in from the freezer, had more crystals growing up on it. I swear, you guys, I'm not making this stuff up. I love to experiment with that kind of stuff. It's so cool. Anyway, just geeking out on that kind of stuff. I love that. All right, so anyway, there's a cup to start. I might need more. We're gonna go ahead and blend.
So how did I know it needed more? Because it sounded like it was just like having, it was too easy to blend. I wanted it to sound like it was working. And usually if there's enough ice in there, it'll kind of sound like it's working. So now is the t moment of truth. It looks interesting. It vortex for sure. Um, I just need to get my little tasting spoon and try it out. I actually have a tasting knife. I love these wooden utensils. Let's try it. Oh my gosh, it's perfect. You know that orange zest I put in? It tastes like orange. I can't really taste the cilantro. It tastes cooling, icy, and orangey. So it's like an orange margarita avocado sorbet. Now what I'm going to do, just for fun and to show you guys how to plate, um, we've got the margarita glass and it's been sitting in a plate of water. Just like, make sure the plate is wide enough that you can get the water around the rim. And then we've got our high mineral salt. You could use large salt crystals or you could just use regular salt. And then just kind of twist it around on the plate to get that in there. Oh my gosh, I'm really excited about this because it tastes like ice cream and I just want to run away and eat it. <laughs> okay, so can you see that? Yes. Okay, so then I'm going to pour it in nice and thick and creamy. Oh goodness. Okay, so that'll serve too. I filled it all the way up, but that's actually kind of a lot. This would be a great appetizer or dessert. Um, I'm going to try something with this. I haven't done this with this peeler before. It's one of those french fry cutters. But I'm going to just kind of peel it and see what happens. See if I can get some little orange, woo, like orange pieces on there just to kind of decorate with. Um, you could, if you can find a zester, I don't know where mine went. And when we went to Bali, a lot of our stuff never came back with us. So it's time to go back out shopping for little tools. But you can do that. Maybe put a little cilantro. You could have done this with mint as well. Um, a little cilantro, but cilantro is kind of interesting, isn't it? To put cilantro in a sweet drink. So that's got the orange, it's got the cilantro, maybe I don't want that one there. Um, I could also put like a little, oh, Caitlin's doing the little cut for me over there. I was thinking I could put a little lime yeah, wedge little on wedge too. On be um, yeah, you want me to cut that one? I'll just put it on the side. She was trying to cut the peel off, but they're just too thick. So then I'll just cut this like nice and thin. Just paper thin, do, 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 do. and then cut it down only one side. So you want half whole, half to be together, and then half cut. And then I can stick that right on there. It's too thin. You know, that's the thing about plating. You just kind of have to play with it sometimes. That's good. And voila, your masterpiece is served. So I'm gonna hit finish on this and then you guys can go back and watch it if anybody missed it if you just tuned in but enjoy your Cinco de Mayo stay healthy stay happy stay safe and drink your or eat your um, coconut margarita sorbet with, with a knife if you want to see you next week next Friday bye